It wasn't a perfect performance, but a win is a win. On today's episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast, we are going to break down the Louisville Cardinals' 20-14 victory over the UCF Knights on Friday evening. So with that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On the Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode is brought to you by Underdog. Sign up on underdogfantasy.com with the promo code Locked On and get your first deposit doubled up to $100. As always, I want to take this time to say thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On the Louisville Podcast is free on all streaming services five days a week, your team every day. Thankfully, I was wrong. If you remember last week on the uh, the week finale of the show, I predicted a Central Florida win, and I hoped that I was going to be wrong. The Cardinals proved me wrong. We are going to talk about the main takeaways, and a lot of that is based upon the defensive performance in the second half. We will then transition into talking about the areas of improvement heading into the Week 3 matchup against Florida State. And unfortunately, uh, we will talk about how Louisville uh, and the defensive line in particular will deal with Jermaine Lole being out for the remainder of the season. So um, overall, in terms of the game, when they were needed the most, the Louisville defense stepped up in a huge way. Absolutely a phenomenal effort in the second half of the game against Central Florida. Uh, the Cardinals went into halftime down 14-7. to They did not allow a single point after the halftime intermission. And really, the defensive effects stem beyond that. Um, all but one of the Central Florida drives in the second half spanned over 40 yards. Let me read to you the possessions for the Knights in the second half. Um, was that three plays, one yard. Five plays, 10 yards. Three plays, negative two yards. I, I'm sorry, this is kind of kind of small reading. Three, pu- three plays, negative three yards. Sorry, four plays, two yards. Five plays, 20 yards. Uh, then Central Florida had the nine-play drive that went 42 yards, ended up being the interception in the end zone from Jarvis Brownlee Jr. And then the final um, drive of the game was a turnover on downs. That went five plays, 20 yards. So the Louisville defense switched some things up at halftime. And in all honesty, this was one of the best halves that I've seen from a Louisville defense in recent memory. Probably dating back to uh, the Charlie Strong days. And, and what I mean by that, I know that there's been some some quality defensive halves. But in terms of Power 5, or not Power 5 opposition, because Central Florida is not in a Power 5 team, but they're a respectable team. They're a solid team. So at the end of the day, this is one of those instances to where the defense really, really bailed out the offense. The offense did just enough. Malik Cunningham's, um, I think it was over 40-yard uh, run, put the Cardinals ahead, and then a field goal from James Turner put the Cardinals up six. But there was still a lot to be desired from the offense. Um, And really, this was a performance to where you kind of have to look at it and think, hey, it wasn't pretty, it wasn't perfect, but we got the win. We got the win uh, in the bouncy house, a place where Central Florida has, I think, two losses since the 2017 season. Um, So, I mean, that's huge to even think about right and, and kind of grasp that Louisville looked so bad in week one and they turned it around didn't look perfect in week two but did just enough to win the game now uh I, I think that a lot of people um have differentiating opinions on Central Florida uh some people think that they were a good team that Louisville just kind of outplayed uh and then there's other people that think Central Florida is not a good team and that Louisville's win against the the Knights is is getting a little bit overhyped. Here's my take on the matter. Um, I I think that if Louisville were to lose this game by, let's say, one to three points, none of the fans would be looking at this contest and saying, I'm proud of the performance that Louisville put on the field. I don't think a good amount of the the, uh, fan base will be saying that. I think that there may be certain aspects of the performance that may be highlighted as a positive note. But in terms of the overall performance, a lot of people would look at this and think, yeah, just 
just not really good enough, right? But Louisville was able to do what some teams have to do at, at times. You know, you're not going to play great every single game, and, and unfortunately they didn't look good week one. But week two, there was some improvement for sure. Uh, but still, uh, penalties, turnovers, um, you know, some missed tackles and opportunities, um, things of that nature. Louisville kind of struggled, um, you know, here and there throughout. So my takeaway is that you accept it for what it is. You understand that there are things that need to be worked on, but you cherish and enjoy the victory because sometimes it's not always going to be pretty, especially when you're playing in a hostile environment on the road, but you go out and you get the win. And, and that's something that, hey, Louisville has – over the past two or three years, they are not two, three years, but the past two years, they've kind of struggled in doing so. Those 50-50 games that came down to the wire, they clutched up here. Uh, defensively speaking, all the kudos go to the defense. Uh, some some great work at certain times offensively. Um, at the start of the game, you know, the first drive was fantastic from the Cardinals. Um, you know, it was an instance to where I, I think that, um, you know, they switched it up play calling wise, kept the Central Florida defense on their toes. Um, Malik Cunningham looked solid, and ultimately the Cardinals ended up in the end zone, right? Well, after that, in the first half, Louisville really wasn't able to get anything going. So, um, you know, defensively, they were going to need um, the team to step up. They did so in the second half. Offensively, did just enough to get the victory. And, and that really is kind of all that matters, right? Um, is that you got the win because you can look back on this and think, okay, there are some things that we need to work on. There's some positives to take away. There are some things that were concerning, but we need to iron them out. Uh, nonetheless, I think that this performance this week against Central Florida was, was still significantly better than what we saw from the Cardinals up in the season opener against Syracuse. So that is a plus. Um, if you remember last year, week, weeks one and two, team didn't really look all that sharp. It kind of took till week three for the team to to get, um, you know, kind of into motion. So we'll see if that's the case. They're definitely going to need it with Florida State coming to town for the home opener on Friday the 16th coming up. Um, but ultimately, I am, you know, in the in the boat that I appreciate the win, but I also understand that. You know, you can't look too much into it. Just because you got the victory doesn't mean that all the problems are cured, right? Like, there's still a lot of work to do, and it's a long season. I mean, this is a team that we expect to win seven games or so. So you got one win. Now you got to get five to six more. So nothing is set in stone. So you have to have short-term memory and losses. You have to have short-term memory and wins. You have to be able to turn that page and not, you know, kind of linger on the last week's results, uh, regardless if it was a win or a loss. Uh, I was proud of the Louisville defense, and especially, you know, I, I think that Brian Brown and Wesley and LeGriff grew, or drew up a, a solid game plan in, in the second half, and that was, you know, hey, look, we are going to force John Rice Plumley to throw the football. And he struggled to do so in this game, and, and a lot of um, Central Florida fans aren't really happy with their program right now, but they did what – they probably should have done against um, Garrett Schrader and Syracuse. Plumley, 16 of 34, 131 yards, no touchdowns to one interception. He averaged 3.9 yards per uh, yards per completion, a 33 quarterback rating. Um, the Knights did average five and a half uh, yards on the ground, 38 carries for 208 yards and two touchdowns. So um, that's something to focus on. Plumley led the team with 83 yards on the ground. Isaiah Bowser had 51 and two touchdowns. Johnny Richardson, five for 47. And then Ryan O'Keefe had a, a one carry for 27 yards. Um, Malik Cunningham looked a lot better in this one, looked more comfortable. Um, Scott Satterfield said in the postgame press conference that we basically kind of paraphrasing, we let him be himself in this game. And uh, he looked definitely more comfortable um, through the year, 14 to 29, 201 yards. Um, could be better as a pocket passer on this one, but 17 carries, 121 yards, and a touchdown on the ground. Obviously, that 43-yard carry proved to be a big uh, stat pattern in that situation. Tyon Evans, once again, over the 70-yard mark, had 19 carries, 75 yards, and a touchdown. Um, Jalen Mitchell had a couple big-time runs. Uh, Tyler Hudson on the receiving end led the Cardinals three receptions for 67 yards. Amari Huggins-Bruce showed once again that when the ball gets into his hands that he makes big-time plays. Marshawn Ford, three for 38. Uh, D. Wiggins, Braden Smith, Dez Melton, and Tyon Evans uh, all got on the re receiving sheet as well. Um, 
Defensively, Kendrick Duncan Jr. looked very, very good. He is, I think, fifth in the country in, in solo tackles. Uh, after week two, Yaya Diaby had a sack and a half. Uh, Momo Sonogo had a uh, half a sack as well. So the Cardinals um, recorded four sacks against uh, Central Florida, something that they struggled to do against Syracuse. They had um, six tackles for losses and five pass deflections as well. So the Lola defense, a much better performance in this game against Central Florida than they looked a- against Syracuse. So in that note, I'm I'm happy to see some improvement. Um, because last week nothing went right for the Cardinals. This week, obviously not a perfect um, you know, outing, but still they did some good things. They did what needed to happen to win. Um, shout out to I want to give a, a shout out to two guys in particular. Now that that defense looked very solid, and this is not taking away from any other guy on this defense. But I was outside of Kendra Duncan Jr., you know, I was really, really impressed with two transfers. Jarvis Brownlee Jr. And Quincy Riley. It doesn't show up on the stat sheet. Obviously, Brownlee had that interception, uh, but he and Quincy Riley made some big time plays down the stretch. Quincy Riley deflected a pass that would have been a touchdown that would have given Central Florida the, the lead. And he deflected that pass. He made some big time plays uh, down the stretch when um, Central Florida was around the goal line as well. So that's something to focus on. He made some big plays. Jarvis Brownlee Jr. looked very good as well, had the interception some big time. Uh, defenses as well, um, and then combine that with Kendra Duncan Jr., Josh Minkins, some big plays, Control Clark showing why he's one of the best uh, cornerbacks in the conference. Linebackers look solid. Defensive line looks solid. This is perhaps, in my opinion, maybe outside of the Syracuse game last year, the best performance that Louisville has had defensively against a good team under Coach Brian Brown and company. So um, With that being said, still a lot of stuff to work on, and I want to talk about what that may look like here in just a second after we talk about our friends over at Underdog Fantasy, which is the title sponsor of the show. The episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to spice up the college football season. Um, It's easy to play. You can win cold, hard cash in a single game. It has invested backing from Mark Cuban, Kevin Durant, Adam Schefter, and more, so it is obviously very trusted. They've always focused on building superior products for a fun user experience. Customer support team is top-notch. It's the best in the business, so there's no confusion. Uh, So you can uh, basically, um, the call to action is this. Look, sign up with the promo code locked on, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. Deposit $100, get $100 for free. That's go to underdogfantasy.com or find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store or Google Play. Um, that's Underdog Fantasy, promo code locked on. Get it on the college football pick 'em action. Or I'm sorry, get in on the college football pick 'em action today. As always, I want to say thank you all for making us your first lesson of the day. Just a reminder, Locked On Louisville is free on all streaming services, including YouTube and now WHAS 11 Plus, five days a week, your team, every day. So look, there's a lot of stuff that um, needs to be worked on ahead of the Week 3 matchup against uh, Florida State, which is on Friday, coming up another, not necessarily a short week, but a short game day week, so to speak, with the game being on Friday. Um the performance against Central Florida, as much as it was about grit and de- and determination and pres- and uh, perseverance, gosh, I can't even speak. There are a lot of things that the Cardinals still need to work on. Um, Central Florida, for example, I-, I think that this is going to be a week where, yes, you play two former wide receivers at quarterbacks in back-to-back week, although they're pretty solid. Um, this might be a little bit of a different test because I think Florida State is probably the best team that they played up to date. And they're come, Florida State's coming off of a, a, a win in week one uh, against a, uh, a mid-major school. And then they beat LSU in the first game of the Brian Kelly era. So that's kind it's kind of hard to really tell how good Florida State is after those two games. Uh, but in terms of the Central Florida game, uh, after that game, in, in terms of what needs to improve for week three for the Cardinals to be put in the best position to win, let's start out offensively. Um, number one, ball security. Um, you know, Louisville was was doing some good things, and unfortunately, Tyon Evans fumbled the football on a big time play, and, and small things like that, ball security and and penalties, which the Cardinals um, had. Let's see, I, I got to go back and, and find how many penalties they had. Uh, Twelve penalties for ninety eight yards. Um, the only thing that makes it somewhat salvageable is the fact that Central Florida had eleven penalties for one hundred and eleven yards. So, um. Louisville was 
basically even in the turnover margin with uh, losing one and gaining one, but turning the football over in that instance, uh, you had the fumble. I had a couple of holding penalties that proved to be big in terms of limiting that offensive flow and hurting that offensive cohesion. So I think offensively, it's just a matter of allowing Malik Cunningham to work in his comfort zone, what he's used to doing. Obviously, he looks solid in the RPOs this week, um, spread the ball out a little more. I want to continue to see him, you know, try to spread the ball out and and go through his reads and just be able to read defenses and and make the best decision. I think that, you know, the difference between week one and week two is, you know, he wasn't really forcing the ball in week two as much as he did in week one. Still missed some uh, somewhat easy throws that he has to make, some open guys and some big uh, third down moments. But, um, you know, he's going to have to improve there. Offensive line wise looked very solid, a lot better than week two. Um, I still want to see the Cardinals continue to, um, you know, try to emphasize the run in the right way. They did average five yards per yard, five yards per carry. Uh, look, I'm not a coach. I'm not, you know, acting like I know more than the coaching staff. But you know, in terms of my observations, every time the Cardinals ran on second and long, uh, Central Florida was expecting it, and they, I don't think they had success all night from from running on second and long, and it really hurt that offensive cohesion because then you're in third long situations and it's a lot easier to convert on third and two third and three than it is third and eight third and nine so that hurt a lot of the offensive cohesion so I want to see that playbook continue to be more versatile um, it did open up a little bit more in terms of the difference between week one and week two but still there's a ways to go so I'm looking for the offensive playbook to continue to open up uh, changing some of that uh you know, some of the, you know, the playing call styles, um, essentially eliminating the predictability from the offense because Central Florida definitely was expecting it on second down. Um, I would like to see Louisville mix it up. I don't feel like you have to run on first and sec- first or second down in every sequence or every series. You know, I think that, um, you know, it's okay at times to, you know, depending on what the defense is showing, but if, if it's showing that, you know, these first, first down or maybe even second down runs aren't really looking all that great, you know, you're able to maybe open up the run when you show that passing the ball is proving to be a strength of yours. So, um, you know, continuing to eliminate that predictability on offense, um, you know, just getting to the point where you are spreading the ball out and, and, you know, imposing your will at the line of scrimmage um, and and not making those mental mistakes that can really uh, deter drives. That's offensively where uh, I'm looking for improvements. Defensively, on the other end, um, I I think we saw a lot of vast improvement as well. Obviously, um, it's going to be a matter of of in week three continuing to uh, get after the quarterback. Um, I want to see more quarterback pressure throughout the game. Um, in terms of opposing receivers, uh, you know, just not allowing them to dink and dunk down the field to where they're taking what you're giving them uh, in pockets of space, just being able to uh, be more solid in coverage. Uh, but they did look solid this week. But the run defense is what needs to improve. Uh, it does hurt with no Jermaine Lole, and we'll talk about that loss here in the next segment. Uh, but um, over five yards per carry to the Central Florida offense. Florida State's a team that likes to establish the run as well. So this is going to be an instance where I think that the biggest areas of improvement for the defense is going to be, um, you know, kind of, um, you know, kind of tuning up the run defense, staying solid in the pass rush and in passing down situations, and just simply, um, you know, kind of doing what you can in terms of converting turnovers. Uh, there were some instances where balls just kind of slipped out of uh, defenders' grasps. And, um, you know, Louisville missed some uh, big-time plays that could have changed the game. Thankfully, they were able to um, do what they had to do to get the win. But at the end of the day, you know, you see what I'm saying. Um, And and just doing the little things better. Um, You know, limiting penalties, um, limiting turnovers, you know, just continuing to playing into your identity on offense and allowing Malik Cunningham to operate within his comfort zone because obviously when he is in his bag, so to speak, he's one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in America. So, uh, but unfortunately we have to end the episode on some unfortunate news. Jermaine Lole, the Arizona state defensive line transfer is out for the season with an injury that I believe it said he sustained against Syracuse. Didn't play much in that contest, but now it is confirmed that he is out for the season. So uh, we're going to talk about what that means for Louisville this season moving forward after we talk about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. As you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to 
faster, and for free. It allows you to create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right person to hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. So obviously final segment of the show, we're talking about the loss of Jermaine Lole, some big time news. Obviously he was going to be a piece uh, to the puzzle that they were going to bring into the defense to really shore up the interior defensive line presence, uh, had a little bit of a minor injury in camp, healed up, played against Syracuse, got hurt again. This time it is season ending. So he has back-to-back season ending injuries. We wish him the best in his recovery. Um, our thoughts go out to him uh, on this journey and hopefully he comes back stronger than ever. Uh, I, I don't know if that means that he will for sure be back next season. I guess that that's something to focus on, um, which – who knows? Um, I don't want to be able to speculate there. Uh, defensive line-wise, this really just means that the returning guys, some of the younger guys, are going to have to step up to the plate. Des Tell uh, being the main one, he had three tackles in the game against uh, Central Florida. You also had some other guys. Jared Dawson had a tackle. Um, let's see. Yeah, so basically Jared Dawson, Ramon Perrier, Mason Rieger, Guys on the defensive line, I would expect maybe this means that we're going to see more from guys like Caleb Banks, maybe even Taufik Thomas. So um, really, the, it, it, this is a such an unfortunate loss because I had high hopes for Lole this season. Um, obviously, I think that uh, this is a, a loss that you have to kind of – look at it in the sense of you don't didn't really know what you were going to get with Lole because we didn't see it on the field yet. But, um, you know, number one, you lose a body in the interior defensive line group, which that sucks because, you know, there's no telling if some of the younger guys are ready to uh, seriously contribute or not. But number two, you know, Lole was – highly regarded and, and regarded as one of the best interior defensive linemen in the country. And for good reason, I mean, go back and watch his film from Arizona state. He was definitely going to be relied upon as this team continued through the season and got into the uh, back half of the schedule and into the thick of ACC play. So um, I think it's just one of those by committee approaches in terms of filling in that, um, filling in that role. Obviously Des tell got two starts uh, the past two games. So he is the starter. So you don't necessarily have to replace a starting player, but the depth has to step up. You're going to have to see guys like Jared Dawson, um, you know, play better. You're going to have to see guys like Henry Bryant uh, rise to the occasion. Zach Edwards, um, you know, I'm interested to see what this means for guys like Caleb Banks, who, you know, at six foot seven, he, you know, he's got his body transformed in the weight room, uh, came in toward the end of the offseason last year. So he has a collegiate season in the, um, you know, in the training um, department under his belt. So I'm interested to see if he's ready to go. Toffee Thomas, the true freshman, that's looked solid as well. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it works. Um, I, I doubt that we are going to see a defensive end kind of slide into the interior. But like I said, it's, it's not going to be anything that we don't already expect. It's just more so um, a matter of getting these guys to be, um, you know, taking this a by committee approach. So, Obviously, it's a little concerning because through the first two games, the Cardinals has have struggled to defend the run. Now, granted, they played Sean Tucker week one, who is a top five running back in college football, in my opinion. And week two, they played John Rice Plumley, who is a solid dual threat. And Isaiah Bowser, Johnny Richardson is, is a one hell of a one two running back duo. So um, it, it could be, um, you know, needless to say that they're, you know, that they play two very solid rushing attacks. But thing about it is is this isn't going to be the end of it florida state has a very solid rushing attack um uh will shipley at clemson um chris rodriguez for kentucky um you know so on and so forth i mean there are are teams on this schedule that are very very good at running the football so uh, needless to say, I think it's a by committee approach. It's a it's a loss that you know. Let's call a spade a spade. It is a, I mean, it's a very very tough 
brutal, unfortunate loss, one at a position that Louisville's really not um, able to afford to lose one at, especially of low lace caliber. Uh, but you're going to have to have guys like Des Tell uh, step up even more. I'm interested to see what this means for guys like Kayla Banks, Jared Dawson, Henry Bryant in particular, maybe a guy like Toffee Thomas as well. Uh, in that 3-4 defensive uh, base package. So ultimately, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the theme of this show is be content with the victory and celebrate the victory, but know that you can't be well, – I mean, actually, no, don't be content. Be con- – I can't even speak. Be appreciative of the victory is what I'm trying to say, but don't be content because there's a lot to work on. It's a long season. It's a good result. But there are a lot of things that did not go right for the Cardinals in the matchup, and you have to tune those things up. And obviously some bad news with the Jermaine Lole injury as well. So tomorrow's episode of the show, we're going to kind of dive in a little bit more into the defensive aspect of things. Uh, We'll we'll talk about the mailbag as well, maybe any recruiting news that we hear. Uh, Florida State previews will probably begin on Wednesday. If I had to take a guess, obviously things kind of differentiate. If we get some more football news or basketball news in the recruiting departments, we will obviously talk about that. Uh, So essentially that's going to wrap up this Monday edition of the show. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here.